Hi, I'm Brett. Today we're talking about the, the ugly side of soot. So if you do a Google search, MRT soot, you'll find what I'm talking about in this video. And today we're specifically going to talk about the turbo diesel Subarus. I'm very, very lucky that um, we competed in one in the Australian Rally Championship several years ago, had a lot of fun and we learned a lot about the car. And as a result, we're continuing to provide some pretty good diagnosis of some of these cars as they get older. So what we've got here is a Subaru Forester turbo diesel. It's done about 100,000 Ks. The client had some problems that are, um, with the DPF. He had really poor um, drivability, just couldn't get it sorted out. We then diagnosed that it had a faulty DPF, and I'll show you that in a second. We then also diagnosed it had some mechanical problems with the boost system because they were leaking. And then we further diagnosed it had a really bad soot buildup. So what I want to show you before we finish cleaning and completing this job is exactly some of the stuff that you may be shocked to see in your turbo diesel Subaru Forester or your Subaru Outback, but it's also very typical on most turbo diesel cars. Um, and we also do a lot of work on the Mitsubishi range of models as well. So let's just have a look. So we've got the cover off the engine. Normally the intercooler sits here. Um, this is the pressure pipe that comes off the turbo because the Subaru diesel turbo is down underneath there, which I'll show you in a second. This, and, and then normally over the top of this is the inlet manifold, and I'll show you that in a second. So the, air, the boosted air comes through this hose, which is also common for braking and leaking. So if you want to check that on your car, check that. It goes into the intercooler. It's cooled by the air coming from the scoop up in here, which is on the top of the bonnet. The air going through the scoop from the bonnet cools the air going through it, which is under pressure, goes around and into this hose here. Now this hose here is also goes into the throttle body and this is where the boosted air goes in before it's mixed with uh, diesel fuel. This hose here, I strongly suggest you check on your turbo Subaru as well because they're commonly faulty. Now, what you can see here, the air then goes through the throttle body and then co comes up into the underside of the inlet manifold out of here. Now, you can see down inside here, all of this build up, and I'll get my screwdriver because I don't want to get it on my hand. I will use my spoon. All of this here, is now the soft, gooey mixture of soot that's come from the exhaust gas recirculation valve and it's mixed with oil coming out of the crankcase. Now what happens is it goes through the inlet manifold and then down into the engine. So have a look down inside here and I'll get another spoon because this one's actually filthy dirty but I'm getting it all over me. I'll scoop some of that out. Look at that there. Now that all that is what goes through the engine and then out and gets combusted. That's part of the emissions control system. So let me move all this horrible stuff out of the way because it is absolutely filthy dirty. And then let's come over to the other side here where we've already started to clean it. It's what it should look like. So you can see in there, we've, the problem is you've got to get it out and try to minimize the amount that goes through the engine. Now, when it's in its gooey state like it is now, it actually doesn't hurt anything, but what we try to do is scoop it out actually with a spoon, and then we wash it out chemically. We put it back together. So come over here. We haven't done this part yet. So this is where the pressurized air goes into the inlet manifold. So the manifold sits like that on top of the engine, which is what you can't see. You see there's a O-ring. And again, there's some more. All of this sits in the inlet manifold. Yummy stuff Vegemite. goes around. Looks like yeah, it looks for Australians. It looks like Vegemite. So in here, again, all of this is what we get rid of, and the other side we haven't cleaned yet. Now, that is the ugly side of soot due to Euro emissions requirements. It's nothing wrong by Subaru. It's just a byproduct of the way the engine runs. It's not always the best. It doesn't actually hurt anything but it doesn't give you the best performance out of the car and over a period of time, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Now this is all really wet and gooey because we've run a, the uh, BG chemical through it first, which makes it a lot easier for us to clean. Now what you've got to remember is all of that ultimately then goes through the turbo and then in through the diesel particulate filter. Now this is the DPF that the client originally um, said was um, having problems with. It turns out that he's bought the car secondhand. Someone prior to his ownership has replaced it with a non-genuine uh, DPF and it's actually physically melted inside. So the first half of the DPF here is the actual DPF itself, which is designed to allow um, the collection and filtering of the exhaust gas um, 
the, the diesel particulate filters and the, and the soot that comes out of the exhaust of the engine before it goes out your muffler to make it all nice and clean and then it turns into a furnace and cleans itself off. Talk about that later. This part here is the catalytic converter. Now what happens is you'll see these sensors here and this sensor here is all part of the way the engine ECU measures the before and after pressure between the DPF and pre between the catalytic converter to see if the DPF is working. This DPF cannot be repaired. It's mechanically collapsed and melted inside. We've now got to replace it and then from there it goes out through the exhaust. So the question is, you might say, well, what do I need to do about it? You need to make sure you're aware of it and how to look after your car. You need to be aware of it's a byproduct of the way the engine operates. But also from a servicing point of view, this is the type of stuff that a lot of people don't know how to look after or don't know what happens because ultimately all of this stuff here goes through the DPF, makes it harder for the DPF to operate as the engine gets older and older. That's when you might be finding that you're having more and more problems with your DPF combined with the DPF getting old itself. You may have a faulty DPF like this client has. You may have really bad soot problem, which this client has, or you may have just poor service history with some other mechanical problems that this poor client has as well. And all these things need to be fixed to try and make the car reliable again. And remember, these model cars are not designed for regular city use. The Subaru range of turbo diesels are designed for country use, regular driving on the freeway, not stop start traffic. So I hope this video has helped you understand more about your car. I want to reiterate, it doesn't mean Subaru has created a bad car. This is a requirements that the world is moving towards. And if you've got a turbo petrol car, the soot may not look exactly the same, but I guarantee you it's building up inside your engine as well. And this is where we're heading into the future direction of Euro 4.5 um, emissions requirements all around the world. But for now, my name is Brett Middleton. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. I really hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about your car. Of course, give us a call, send us an email, do a search MRT Soot for all of our other videos on YouTube. But for now, thanks for watching.